You know, we've often said about the story of city life that you just can't make this stuff up. And it's true. Like all of your favorite stories, it's one of triumph and tragedy, mountains and valleys, giants to conquer, and the hand of God's grace on it all through a people that have moved forward with incredible resilience, determination, and most of all faith that God had and still has great plans for city life. Thinking back to early 2010, Casey and I went through a church planner's assessment center and began to ask God where he would want us to plant our lives. At the very same time, hours away here in Houston, there was an amazing group of people that had been through years of challenges, loss, leadership, and building transitions. They were meeting in Edwards Cinema, where the current pastor had recently resigned, and they found themselves with no leader and a dwindling community. The outlook was bleak, but Scott and Cindy Fiddler, along with a remnant of faithful leaders, stepped up to rally the church to keep the faith that God was not done with city life yet. So they raised money to pay off debt, and they believed for a pastor that had the same vision and passion to move the church into the future. We accepted an invitation to visit and see if we might be a good fit. It's really hard to explain, but the moment our feet stepped on the Houston soil, we immediately fell in love with the city. It kind of felt like coming home, although we'd never been there. Then, as we met the tremendous people at City Life and heard the incredible story of what they had been through, we were even more amazed. The fact that they pressed on week after week without a pastor, held services, loved on people and continued to make disciples confirmed in our hearts that these were indeed the kind of people we wanted to build something with. And fortunately for us, the feeling was mutual. Here we were, courageous group of people, not knowing if there would be a church to move forward with tomorrow. And me and my wife not knowing if we had what it took to help move it forward. And we walked into this unknown future together in June of 2010. Statistically speaking, we were looking at about a 2% chance of even making it given our circumstances. I wouldn't exactly call that winning odds, but none of that matters when God is the one writing the story. We went through the church planting trials of the theater forgetting about us and beginning movies in the middle of the service, broken elevators trapping our volunteers for hours and much more. We saw people come to know Jesus and come into community, but we knew pretty quickly that we needed a permanent home. After years of searching, losing buildings, and fighting not to lose our hope, God brought us to our current building on Grand Boulevard in a very miraculous and providential way. And yet, what was supposed to be a four-month build-out turned into almost two years of battles to occupy what was already ours. Permit issues, our architects suddenly passing, and finally Hurricane Harvey caused delay after delay. We once again pressed on through those challenging days, resolute in our passion to make disciples and serve our city. And in the fall of 2017, we finally settled into our current home with such joy in our hearts, we could barely contain it. In the years since, we have been through tremendous growth and incredible losses, lives being changed and transformed, and God has been with us every step of the way. And we all know what's happened in the last couple of years. We've navigated our way through a global pandemic and an ever-changing landscape, highly charged with social, racial, political tension. In the midst of this, We've grown stronger. We fought for community together despite the world that wants to separate and divide. We have pressed on to be Christ-centered and not me-centered, to be spirit-empowered and not culturally swayed, and to be socially responsible and not overly individualistic. If we had not dug our hills into our mission and what unites us most, the gospel of Jesus and the passion to advance his kingdom, we would be like many others, who have left the faith or lost hope altogether. As seen through the history of the church, we pressed on through the challenges, believing God has a calling and a purpose for this house. 
Pre-pandemic in 2019, we were growing at such a pace it was hard to fit everyone, especially kids in cars. We were running three services and bumping 600 with about 100 kids on Sunday. With that happening, we began to make calls around the area to see if there was any land for sale. The problem was not only that we were growing, but this area was growing. Condominiums and apartments were already buying the land around us. We ended up speaking to our neighbors about purchasing the building adjacent to us, and they were somewhat interested. When the world shut down, we obviously put on the brakes and began to pivot what we were doing. But God had other plans. The owner ended up coming back to us at the end of 2020. We settled on a great price that was below market value and bought the building that I'm standing in now. Can we just take a minute and praise God that in the midst of a world turned upside down, He allowed us to gain a building and take ground. Ever since, we have spent much time in prayer and in discussion on the plan for the land. This past October, we spent three days with an architectural company called Building God's Way to help us imagine what the future could look like. We started by sharing our passion to have a facility that will be used throughout the week and not just sitting until the weekend. This has been our desire all along. God personally dropped in my heart these words, bless the city and fund the mission. When we shared this with BGW, who works with many churches around the nation, they shared with us a potential partnership that might fit this vision and introduced us to Lionheart. Lionheart is a nonprofit Christian organization committed to excellence in early childhood education. They are passionate about equipping kids to be world changers and supporting working parents who need quality, affordable childcare and education for their children. They have partnered with many churches around the nation to reach families and build godly foundation in kids. For us, we have always valued and cherished kids, not just tolerated them. Not only could this be a tremendous way to be a blessing to the city, it is a way to fund the mission. After reaching out and meeting with Lionheart, they sent a preliminary study of about a six minute radius of our church location and found it to be viable. Our hearts have definitely aligned through a mutual mission and vision, and it feels extremely providential. The leadership of our church and Building God's Way are all in agreement that this is what's next for city life through God's leading and guiding. After all these years, the pages of the next chapter, city life lay before us with promise and potential. The dream of being a light to our city, families, and students in the facility beyond one day a week is quickly becoming a reality. The future of city life starts now. Meet the next generation of City Life Houston. This vision for the future will unfold in two phases. The first phase will be building out the childcare facility that will double as our kids space on Sundays. This will be a transformation of this current building you're seeing now. Beginning here is strategic for multiple reasons. One of which is the fact that City Kids is still growing and the need for a new facility to house our amazing kids on Sundays is urgent. Beginning here will also allow us to begin to generate revenue through the Lionheart Academy, which will help fund our next building phase and raise money for our future church plants. Begin believing and praying with me now that many, many families would be impacted and brought to Christ and community through this facility and this program. We truly believe this is one of the ways we will reach and bless the city. We have received an estimate of about $2.1 million for this first phase. We have spoken with building campaign professionals and they've told us that this is very doable with our size church and our current budget from what they've experienced over the years. Once phase one is complete, we will move on to the expansion and construction of a brand new 500 seat auditorium and a large lobby with a coffee house to facilitate more opportunities to create community and bless our surrounding area. Can you imagine with me the college students gathering to hang out, 
do homework or have Bible study? What about the life-changing conversations where God moves over a cup of coffee? Think about parents being able to drop off their kids at Lionheart, come next door to get some caffeine. I'm overwhelmed with joy, the very thought of some of these opportunities that we believe God will bring us. This is no small vision, but we believe that God calls us to the kinds of dreams that require great faith and reaching outside what we think we can do on our own, because it's never been about us. In fact, the story of City Life has rarely, if ever, unfolded the way we thought it would have gone or in our perfect timing. But it has also been more beautiful than we could have ever even imagined. And his track record of faithfulness is perfect. Why would we doubt he could do it now? Whether you've been at City Life for two months, two years, or 12 years, there's never been a better time to buckle up, join us on this adventure of faith, and put yourself in the pages of this incredible story. To launch us into the future, we are beginning a campaign that we're calling Generations. If you read in Psalm 145, it says this, one generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. For us, it's always been about the next generation of children, students, and leaders. This is not only for us today though, this is also for those to come for many, many years. As you take your part of ownership in this vision, we're asking you to pray and commit financially to see this dream become reality for all of us. Through your part, my part, our part, and of course, by the grace of God, we will build something that will outlast us all. The legacy of making Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, and socially responsible disciples will move forward, and it will be in Houston as it is in heaven. The best is yet to come. I can see it, family. The question is, will you see it with me?